All right, so it looks like a good number of you have joined our room already. Um, first and foremost, congratulations on your fall 2021 acceptance to Hunter College. Very excited to welcome you to the Hawk family. Today's Hawk Talk is all about computer science at Hunter. You will get to hear from the faculty member, you will get to hear from our current students who are in the program. Um, so you'll get to hear a few different things about the program and at Hunter at large. Um, a few things to note before we get started. One, you guys are in a webinar mode. So that means that there is a little Q&A button on the bottom. If you have any questions about anything that you hear during your session, make sure you put them in there. Those questions that could be answered sort of quickly, we will definitely answer right there and then. If not, they will be marked to be answered during a live Q&A session. So don't worry if you don't see your answer pop up right away. Chances are we're saving your question to ask them directly to the faculty member or to the students. Don't be shy. Our students love talking about the program. So make sure you put the questions in the Q&A wherever it is on your screen. So without a further ado, once again, welcome. I would love to introduce you to Professor Ligoria from the Computer Science Department. Hi everyone, and uh, also I would like to repeat, welcome and congratulations on being accepted at Hunter College. I have just a little visual here and I'm going to share with you just to sort of um, follow on while I am talking. So there we go, welcome. <laughs> um, we are very happy to, that you're joining us here at Hunter College. And I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the computer science department. Um, as you probably, I mean, you know that, uh, probably know that we offer a BA in computer science. What you might not know is that our department has grown incredibly in the last 10 years from less, uh, fewer than a hundred major to up to 1300 current major. So at the moment we are a very large department. In fact, we are the second largest department at Hunter College. Um, as I said, we offer a BN computer science. We also offer a concentration in bioinformatics for those who are interested in the um, bioinformatic concentration uh, of computer science. Uh, we have a fairly new master program, which doesn't concern you, but uh, there are master students in our programs and um, doesn't concern you for the moment at the moment, but as you progress in your studies and more when you're taking your senior courses, you may end up taking some classes with master students. Um, most of our graduates also end up graduating with a math minor because by the time you've fulfilled your math requirements, it only takes maybe the addition of a course or two to also graduate with a math minor in mathematics. Um, so once again, we grew, we became a very large department. And in just the last couple of years, uh, we've hired four new full-time research active uh, faculty professor and four new uh, full-time lecturer. And I'm actually one of the doctoral lecturers who's been hired uh, in the last uh, couple of years uh, out of this uh, you know, expansion. Um, so our core, uh, going backwards, our core courses um, include a sequence in uh, software engineering called software design and analysis, where you will learn not only programming, but concepts of software engineering that can transfer to um, across any language. So we do uh, our teach our introductory course in Python, and then our three course series in software engineering is uh, taught in C++. However, the focus here is computer science. It's not, uh, so what we're, these sequence really focuses on is the underlying software engineering concepts. There is a uh, sequence in computer architecture uh, of uh, uh, two courses in computer architectures and then theory we have um, computer theory, well, you were uh, studied uh, and understand the underlying theory, mathematical theory, underlying uh, computer science. Uh, then uh, there is a course in operating system and discrete structure. So this is constitutes the core along with uh, the math requirements that come with it. Once you're done with that, and that will uh, take up your first, uh, first or second year, really depending on where you are or if you're transferring with credits, 
And then after that, after you've fulfilled all your core courses, you can move on to electives. And we offer electives in a wide range of uh, concentrations. And these mostly correspond to um, active research areas of our full-time faculty. Um, these are not offered all the time. Uh, uh, every semester we have different rotating electives, but we usually have electives in artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, natural language processing. We have um, two, uh, or actually would say, this is a, a, a one of the most represented, um, I, I would say trio in our um, full-time faculty. We have a full-time faculty, um, one of the new uh, full-time professors that was hired in the last two years uh, focuses on natural language processing. Um, we also have uh, active research faculty and big data, data science. We have two, one, one new fa uh, faculty uh, that works in cybersecurity. Um, also, one of the new full-time faculty focuses uh, his research on virtual reality and augmented reality. We have um, computer vision and software engineering. So the reason why you want to know this now is um, because as you're fulfilling your core, you might want to have in mind uh, as you're learning more, what are the things you will want to try? And um, Often our students, after taking one of these electives, uh, if they particularly like the course, they form a relationship with the professor. And most of these professors have active research labs. So there is the option of becoming <clears throat> involved in, in uh, one of these research labs. The other uh, route is um, to, to focus more on becoming um, um, more career ready and well not to say that this these only offer research possibilities but these also re offer research possibilities although uh, these are uh, disciplines that are very um, uh, desirable also in industry but we also have a program that is called tech in residence and this is a cuny wide program which we've had at hunter college for a couple of years already where we have engineers from um from uh new york tech companies come and teach one or two semester courses so far we've had um engineers come and teach agile software development, web development, mobile development. We've had a very successful course in uh, blockchain. And another thing that you will have done towards the end is take your senior capstone. These are taught by adjunct faculty and often also by uh, tech and residence, um, tech and residence uh, engineer visitors. And these are, this is more of a course where you, uh, this is a projects course where you work with a group of students to, um, to produce a larger project. And these are uh, very uh, sought after when you're applying to uh, internships or jobs. So by the end, you want to have at least one or two of these larger projects that you've worked on and the senior capstone which is a requirement ensures that you have at least a large project by the time you are done with your coursework. So I'm just gonna go back in my slides. This is sort of the progression in, if in the first few years you work on your core. And at the same time, you want to be aware of what is happening around in the department, who the faculty is, what the faculty is working on, who has research labs, who can, you know, where you can get some experience. Um, you know, by the second and third year, you will have developed a sense of what kind of direction you're interested in. And it is important to understand from day one that this is a process that you will be working on throughout. And so advising becomes very important. And I strongly encourage you to form a very early relationship with an advisor. Um, we have two uh, advisors that are um, 
that work very closely with the computer science department. Emily Peguero is the um, early, um, uh, early college advisor. So she will be advising uh, mostly freshmen and sophomores. And then we have uh, Justin Trojera and Professor um, Schweitzer who advise um, later, um, you know, uh, juniors and seniors. And so in this relationship that you will have with your advisor, you want to make sure that um, you're working, you, you want to look at what's next and what's close to you. What, what am I doing this semester? What am I doing next semester? But what, however much possible, you want to also look at the long run. Oh, I'm interested in artificial intelligence. So maybe I need to make sure that I take that math class that when I am ready for that elective will be the prerequisite. So it's good to have a plan. And the more you plan, the more you will be ready um, to, um, to uh, you know, take the course when it becomes available or um, internships also become um, a something that you want to plan for. So we have a pre-tech prep center in the workings. So uh, it is not fully fledged yet. And of course we're in the middle of a pandemic. So there is no physical center at the moment. Uh, but Elise Harris is uh, in charge of the pre-tech center and she has a um, website where students can start planning and start understanding how to get become career ready early on. There is a uh, newsletter being sent every month with um, possible internships. And now you're thinking, well, I just you know got here. I don't think I, I'm ready for internship. I am, why am I thinking about electives? To look at these things, although you're not going to do them uh, right now, you're not having an internship your first semester, uh, it's good so that you're aware what, how, what you should be preparing for and what to look forward to. So if you start looking at the internships at that email and you look at the internships that become available every day, you can start look, understanding what is out there, what are people asking for, and then start taking the classes that will help you prepare for that. Usually not until the second, uh, what we call the, the software design and analysis two, which is the second in our software engineering series, uh, will you have the knowledge um, that is required for an internship. But being aware of that uh, will allow you to make sure that you are prepared by the time you get to your sophomore year and you will have acquired the skills necessary for applying to one of those internships. And once again, by the time you're uh, uh, ready to graduate, most employers would like to see at least one or two large projects and internships and the, uh, the capstone um, will allow you to have that preparation. So form a very early on relationship with advising so that slowly and in time you will form a clearer and clearer plan for your path. And also uh, through the pre-tech prep center, sort of have an eye out as to what will be next so that slowly you can um, form your path in the program to be ready for what you decide comes next, your internship, applying for a job or an internship or a graduate school. We also have clubs, computer science clubs, and this is a link to um, uh, either their websites or Discord server. Uh, we have a few, it's during the pandemic, it's uh, unclear whether some of them are still very active, but we have a women in computer science club, an open source club, the ACM uh, might uh, still be active uh, or not. Uh, and we also have a gaming club. Um, and then finally, once we will be back on campus, we also have uh, five dedicated lab, physical labs on campus. Um, these are um, 
the only Linux labs available on campus. Um, two of them are fully dedicated to our intro courses. So one is completely dedicated to our first introduction to computer science course. And the other lab is dedicated whenever there aren't classes being taught in it to teaching, uh, to support for the uh, next software design and analysis courses. And in a year where we're on campus in the afternoon, or I mean, throughout the day, students are in these labs, they're available to you when you're working on projects, uh, on programming assignments with other students. And this is where our undergraduate teaching assistant program comes in. We have a very, um, we have a wonderful uh, undergraduate teaching assistant program uh, that is mostly there to support the lower level courses. So an in introduction to computer science or software design and analysis uh, one and computer architecture one, you will have, you will be working very closely with other students who uh, have taken the class before you and uh, will have, you know, done really well and applied for the uh, teaching assistant program. And um, this is great support. Um, there, uh, we find that not only socially, but also, uh, um, um, you know, it would be really uh, hard for us to teach our courses, especially in large format, since uh, our department grew so much without our undergraduate teaching assistants. So they're great for our students. But then also, if you do really well in a course, we uh, hire our undergraduate teaching assistants straight out of classes. So you can, you could choose to apply to uh, TA for one of the courses that you really enjoyed. And we find that our TAs are uh, learning so much out of this process, just you know, uh, gaining the experience of explaining concepts. And then it really makes for great, um, you know, just social, um, especially these days that we're in a pandemic, we have all of the teaching assistants uh, working on um, online, but we still have uh, uh, offer that that assistance. And it's great for making connections with other students, making connections with your peer students as you're in a course and with other students that uh, offer, the, the, you know, the TAs. Um, checking on time. So I think, uh, that is all I have. I mentioned a couple of things here. I mentioned the Pre-Tech Prep Center uh, and I will post that link, although this might be a, you know, a bit too much information at this point. And I will also post the link to advising. Uh, so just so that you know who are the, 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 who are the advisors that, although I know I'm, I'm pretty sure you will get that information also through other channels. All right, Irina, I think I'm, I'm done now. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for giving such a good overview. Um, we did get some questions already, but before we go into the Q&A, I would love to introduce you guys to the students who are joining us today. So we are going to start with Tyler, and Tyler is currently a TA in the program that Professor Ligorio just mentioned. Um, Tyler, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? No? Have you heard? Okay. All right. So, hi, I'm Tyler. So I'm a Class of 2023 student at Hunter. I'm also a TA for the Intro to the ComSci course. I chose to major in computer science here because I actually went to a high school that's linked to Hunter College. So I got to learn about the programs and the staff for a very long time before I had to actually commit to Hunter. I thought there's a lot of like diversity in what you could do with ComSci here. It's not just coding, it's not just machine learning, it's not just research. And there are also like this huge plethora of opportunities you can do outside of class. Like I'm currently involved in CodePath, which is like a, a free non-credit sort of group that you can take classes with. So I'm learning how to write iOS apps with them right now. And through them, you can get internships. You can also get jobs as being a teacher for the course, for the program. I learned about all that through Hunter. So I didn't learn about that anywhere else. So having that good first two years here is really, if you want to stick with Hunter for CS, it's a very fruitful program. Awesome, Tyler. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. There are questions already that are coming for you directly. Um, next up, I have Tan Tana, who is also a computer science major. Um, Want to introduce yourself? 
Um, hi guys, I'm Tana. I'm a freshman, second semester at Hunter College pursuing computer science. Uh, I decided to study computer science at Hunter because of the diverse faculty and interactive courses. I learned about Hunter through one of my teachers in high school. Of course, she went to Hunter as well. And she talked, told me about all of this internships that Hunters offer, the side courses, online courses, of course. And through Hunter College, I also got an internship during the winter and as we received like weekly newsletters from Ellis Harris. And I took that internship with JP Morgan and Chase, I'm mean, JP Morgan Chase and company. So we got to build like a lot of networking skills through that. And one of the clubs that I'm involved is women in computer science. So we got to interact with a lot of women in computer science at Hunter College, despite our grades and even the alumni. So yeah, Hunter is a great school for computer science. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tana. I love that you're already part of all the, um, the like the winter sh winternship, I think that's what they call it, right? Um, and you're just a freshman. Can you talk a little bit about that? Students are asking what winternship is. Oh, uh, winternship, oh my bad. Winternship is like a small internship during winter. So you get matched with different companies. And after you get a given interview with them, and one of the companies like select you for to intern in their company for one month. And you just work with them for one, one month. For me, I worked with um, JP Morgan Chase's um, digital desktop where we had to, uh, I mean, not me. I collaborated with four other girls where we worked in their digital desktop to make like new widgets for their desktop. We couldn't complete it, but they continued with what we left it. So yeah. Awesome, so thanks. For one month, yeah. Thank you. Um, Tyler, a question came in for you. Somebody's asking, when is it possible to become a TA? How does one become a TA? And um, sort of how, what does the TA program do for you? So it varies by course. For 127, the intro course, you'd have to get an A. So do all the homeworks and get an A on the final. But for the higher classes, it's kind of like do every project perfectly. Not perfectly, but ace all of them. So for me, I do the intro course and it's very since it's Python, we don't do Python in any other class. I get to learn about Python at a more in-depth level that I wouldn't normally get at Hunter. You also get some web development work working on the, the course website. So it's very fruitful and also pays pretty well. Nice, that's a huge perk. Professor Liguria, I didn't know that they get paid. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Professor Liguria, a question for you. Somebody's asking, the program at Hunter is a BA program. Is there a perks to that being a bachelor's of arts versus, versus being a bachelor's of science? Um, I don't know uh, that there's perks. Uh, you, you do have the distribution uh, so you will have a bachelor's of arts and you will be able to take classes that are encouraged to take classes that are not only in computer science or in the sciences. So you will have a uh, well-rounded education. Um, we um, some, sometimes a, a bachelor's of science is considered as going more uh, in depth in, in uh, certain requiring more credits within the concentration. Uh, however, uh, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know if uh, there is, you know, that, that trade off, but um, we still have our computer science department and we fulfill all of the, you know, standard requirements of a computer science uh, program. Awesome. I think that actually leads us right into the next question. Somebody is asking if it's possible to um, double major or have a minor. And I think this is where the Bachelor's of Arts is really important. Um, as a curriculum hunter or like as a school hunter really values the education that's a well-rounded education. So that's where the Bachelor's of Arts comes in. It gives you the flexibility to have that second major or second minor where, yes, you're focusing on your major, but it still gives you a little bit of wiggle room um, to have something else that's going for you. So for a student who's asking, is it possible to be pre-med type of track and computer science? Have you had those students before? Absolutely, yeah. And we, at Hunter, we actually have a lot of uh, double majors, uh, the, or, you know, major minor, but most of our students uh, graduate with at least a major and a minor. The most common matches major in computer science, minor in mathematics, 
And that's what most of our students graduate with. As I mentioned, the manner of mathematics almost comes in naturally. However, if you have any other interest, we have a bunch of double majors uh, in sometimes uh, the most, uh, you know, just very different uh, uh, areas or sometimes overlapping. So we would have biology and computer science, or you would have you know, chemistry and computer science. And um, yeah, we have a lot of students that double major. It's crazy. It's a crazy we, amount of work, but you got this yeah. guys. <laughs> there is also a media department and lately we've seen many more uh, double majors with media and computer science as computer science uh, really expands to being able to sort of, um, you know, bridge many other uh, disciplines and become a tool that is useful in many other disciplines. We see that uh, this interdisciplinary um, uh, uh, component becomes very important. So many students will actually go the other way. So they start in another field and then they realize that that computer science knowledge could really supplement that field. And then they come and take that uh, double major with computer science. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, a question came in for Tyler, actually. Tyler, can you talk a little bit about your experience in upper division classes? So past the freshman year, students are asking, what are those classes like? Do you learn different languages or do you focus on one? What is that like? So once you get past the intro, like your first year, we usually be the intro class, software analysis one, discrete structures. Then you can get to computer architecture and computer theory, which is very, it's not really coding at all. So it's mostly like understanding how a computer circuit works and how they process data. And it's, it can be very like out of left field at first because you're doing all this coding at first, then you switch to all this theory, but it's very applicable. They teach you like how it applies to the real world mechanics. So it doesn't feel like you're actually doing nothing. It feels like you're actually learning about something useful. Awesome, thank you. Um, and similar question for Tana. Somebody's asking, how is that first year class? Um, what is that like? Did you learn anything? And what do you need to know to get that internship in your first semester? Do you learn it in that freshman class, intro class? Um, yes, of course. So my first intro class was Python. And surprisingly, the team I worked with was working with Python in Athena Visual Studio. But you, for, you don't need that type of skill for one particular internship since there were like 35 companies. So you choose like your top three that you want to work with based on what they're looking for, what your experiences are. So yeah, there is a vast opportunity and like a lot of scope for you to get an internship. And for my first semester, it was, it was sad that it was online, not in person, but it was still very great. Like there were a lot of help on Discord, and then we had like lab sessions, so which were awesome too. Did you go to Tyler's session? Uh, I think that was Owen, yeah, <laughs> who was teaching labs that time, yeah. Awesome. Professor Liguria, question for you about coursework in general. Do students get to learn all the programming languages, or is there a focus on one versus another? So uh, our intro course is taught in Python. Um, and uh, in our intro course, uh, uh, in addition to introducing some of the core concept of computer science, we also introduce a bunch of packages. And Python is now a very uh, popular language just because of the plethora of packages that are out there that will allow you to, um, to, to work you know, with uh, and bridge with many different applications. After that, we teach our core courses. So it's the sequence, the computer, si uh, the software design and analysis sequence in C++. And that is an object oriented uh, language. So we move on to object oriented programming, which you will learn. I'm not going to go too much into that, but that is our object oriented language. And that's our object oriented sequence. After that, or in addition to that, we're we offer, uh, so we're starting a large elective that will be a, an elective in data science. So that is taught back in Python. Or if you decide later to do an elective in functional programming, then that is uh, taught in OCaml. Or there is a course in software engineering and you may be exposed to other languages there. So at that point, that's where your path becomes more personalized. And that is where you might be exposed to other languages. However, these days, um, 
very few people live their entire career in a single language. So the ability to have knowledge in one language that is uh, well-rounded will then allow you to easily move to other languages. And that is just something that these days you're gonna have to do. And so you will find yourself working on a project that requires another language, but it will be, wouldn't be too hard at that point to switch languages. It sounds, everything you just said sounds like complete space to me. So kudos for you guys for even knowing what's happening. Every language, I'm like, what? Yeah, there's more than that. Um, so again, thank you for covering all that. Tyler, a question came in for you. How would you describe the student experience at Hunter within the computer science program? How's the computer science community? Um, it's very, it's pretty like involved really. Like once you can find a case major anywhere in, in the, on campus really. And the staff is very attentive to like the uh, internship emails. It's in my inbox every single day. So I'm always having like a new opportunity coming my way because of the department. So they've even, you said earlier, they've grown a lot over the past few years. You can really see how much has grown. I've only been on campus for like since 2018. So even that short amount of time, I've seen a lot of like very involved, maybe from not only my peers, but also the staff. So like everyone's working together really on campus. Awesome. And a similar question for Tana as well. The question is, what is the women and women who code club on campus or women in computer science club? Yeah, it's women in computer science club. So it's like a community with all the women in computer science. And we also have like um, some students outside of Hunter College, most likely CUNY alumni and students. So since it has been online ever since I joined, we mostly communicate through like Discord. And it's like a platform where you can get interview preparations, resume skills, like they post different opportunities for job, internships, even courses. And they also do Zoom activities sometimes where you can like actually get ex like experience talkings or like interview preparations, anything. Yeah, it's like a very helpful community. Thank you. Yeah, can I add to that? So yes, now that we are in a pandemic, um, uh, Discord has become a, a, a place where most of the, the social and, and, and interaction is happening. As I mentioned before the pandemic, a lot of that was happening around the lab. So we're on the 10th floor of the North building. And uh, a lot of that interaction was happening with the TA and then the clubs were often using the lab to host monthly meetings, depending on how active the club is. So right now, uh, this semester, everything is really happening um, on, on these platforms. But I have to say that if anything else, it has intensified on Slack and Discord and there are uh, WhatsApp channels, our students are really forming a very strong community and, and just constantly interacting. It's actually really nice to see. Thank you. Um, Professor Liguria, a question for you that's a little more general. Students who are looking for internships who may not necessarily know which way to go with computer science yet. Is there any assistance for them and how would you describe that process? Yeah, so as I said, that pre-tech center that is in the works, but is not quite there yet, uh, is really at this point, Elise Harris. Um, she was arrived at Hunter College with this uh, huge grant, which was called CUNY 2X. And that was a two year run where they were choosing groups of students and get them through uh, internships. But that sort of laid the ground to understanding what was necessary. And now they're going to extend that to this uh, pre-tech prep center. What we have now in place, because we're not physically at Hunter, is this uh, newsletter, which you should sign up right away, and I'll put that in the chat right now. And then um, this, uh, this, so this, through this newsletter, you see what, uh, what becomes available. And so at the beginning, it's really important for you to be aware of what is out there, because as a freshman, you will not be prepared to take any of these internships. And then Elise is great at having a really forming relationships with you. So you can email her, ask her, oh, I was really interested in that internship, but what do I need to be prepared? And she has a website that has stages and tells you what you should be doing to be prepared to the next stage. So right now everything is happening uh, online. We don't have a physical, uh, but as we will move on back to campus, then there, and the pre-tech center forms, they uh, are expecting to have 
um, more events uh, for sort of mock interview preparation, uh, giving you more of an idea of what that preparation feels like by giving tutorials. And, and, and Elise is also um, Tana's contact uh, that she mentioned earlier and how she found a internship program. Awesome. I know Elise sends out a lot of emails, um, so you really have to pay attention, folks. And this is something you'll probably hear um, in very a lot of different hawk talks, and even orientation. You've got to check your hunter emails when those start coming. Um, that will be your sort of one resource for everything. Anytime a professor is trying to reach you, your hunter email is going to have all of this information. Um, so Tyler is not joking when he says he probably gets like 20, 30 emails a day. Um, just from computer science department. It's definitely not a joke, it might happen, um, but that's opportunities for you. It is a big part on you to kind of take charge of those opportunities and go with it. We've gotten a few other questions um, that I hope we can still fit in if that's okay. Um, Professor Ligoria, students are asking about sort of graduate work or a specific field within computer science. So if they want to study software engineering or if they want to go to graduate school afterwards, does Hunter prepare them for that? So as I said, um, there is not a required thing that you must do and we will prepare you for that. That's why you want to have your eyes open from the beginning uh, so that you, as you sort of, you know, we can't prepare everyone for research and everyone for internships and everyone for jobs and that everybody's prepared for everything that is not possible. But as you, so everybody goes through the same core. And then by the time you're on your sophomore year, you should start looking to uh, get internships. And then whether you plan on going into research or uh, directly into industry right after your degree, an internship is always a good idea to have towards the end of your sophomore year, the beginning of your junior year. And then after that point, you will be get, taking electives. And so at that point, you will start understanding what interests you and the way in which it interests you. So you take an elective and a topic that you particularly enjoy, you form a relationship with that professor. If, that prof if you think you want to go into research or maybe grad school, you will approach that professor and start talking about joining their research lab. And then as you join their research lab, you will be doing some research experience, but that will also get you thinking about GREs. Am I applying to graduate school? And that's the way you will be prepared for that. Otherwise, you will be gaining that experience in that uh, course or in that research lab. And now you can apply for that other internship that it's more advanced because now you have a very specific skill and then that will help will be will look really good on your resume once you apply for that job after graduation so you need to be you know have your why uh, your you don't need to know now so don't think that you're today you need to know what you're doing but in the next couple of years look at those internships emails look at the act, research active faculty look at what electives are being offered and start understanding where you want to go Thank you. Um, I think this is an interesting question that will kind of help us summarize a few things. And I think Tana would be kind of good to start off. Somebody's asking, I'm a little worried. I don't have a lot of programming experience. Um, did you come in prepared or did you kind of learn at Hunter and started from there? Did you know anything before starting? Um, before starting, I took an AP computer science in my high school where I learned on JavaScript only. So that was my only experience before I came to Hunter. But during the summer, I also took uh, with Breakthrough Tech, I also took a small course with them, which was on HTML and CSS. But you don't really need any programming language because Python kind of gives you a, like a start off with it. And I would recommend if you want to, you can look up like online courses. There are very like free online courses available on all languages like Code Academy as Tyler mentioned and also Code Path. I think they both, I don't remember <laughs> my bad. And uh, there's also um, Girls Who Code. You could join that community because they provide a lot of help as well. But yeah, you don't need any like intro programming language, but I think it's good to have so that you know what you're doing when you're actually in part of that course. 
Thank you. Professor Luguri, do you want to add to this? Should the students, students are asking, do you recommend starting to learn some languages? Should they start looking at where something over the summer before they start your class? What's your recommendation? So our introduction to computer science course does not uh, assume any prior knowledge. So if you go in there and you've never programmed before, you, sh you will not have a problem, although you need to really get in there with the UTAs, with the teaching assistants. Because uh, if you're never programmed before, sometimes it can be a little bit shocking. So it, you don't have to, if you don't have time to, to go on course academy and take a course you don't have to we don't expect you to do that but you need to be involved and get into tutoring and get that going now what tana said uh becomes true for example we offer uh usually at least once a year a software development course uh so there however a lot of our students feel like they want to start with a web app earlier right and so um some that could be something that you might want to think about which is supplement so okay i'm going to be learning how to program but i want to learn something else that it's easy but it's just not being covered like you know simple uh web app or i want to do a you know a ios development and make my own you know iphone app those things uh, we offer sometimes we do we do have uh, some electives that are offered once in a while, but those are things that as you acquire more experience, then you might want to supplement on the side. Uh, so going back to that, will you be completely lost if you start with no experience? No, you, we do not expect you to have that experience. If you want to, because you have the time in the summer off, then you will be, uh, you know, it will be easier on you, you will have an easier time and maybe you will feel like, oh, this is easy so I can take that web development course in the meantime. Fair. That's a fair statement. Um, Tyler, a last question for you. Students are asking what has been sort of the major difference between having in-person classes and having classes online. Um, how has the computer department, computer science department sort of our classes changed? Have they been, um, more adaptive have they helped you more in different ways how did that change take place and it's definitely it's a bit harder because you can't really get getting in-person help with like in the labs is very key to like success at hunter college and computer science so being there physically in the lab with the ta working with you is like key to passing your homeworks and your projects but they've adapted pretty well so now you can get on a call with the ta or do email chains back and forth They've also sort of changed how the course is structured for a lot of classes. Like in the class I see for with Professor Ligorio, we definitely have like a lot of like support added throughout the pandemic. So you can come to like tutoring, a lab review and so on and so forth. So we definitely like added that safety net for you for if you're doing an online class, you have protection so you don't fail because you're online. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Professor Ligorio, all yours. <laughs> Yeah, just one little thing I want to add to that is that it's really important that you are proactive that way because we can't see you and say, hey, you go to tutoring, right? So it's really important uh, that you you look for, you know, whatever course you are, go to tutoring, talk to the TAs, make sure you know, uh, you know, what the due dates are and what the, plat the software platforms are. Just go in there and talk and it's great also uh, to build community. You will end up meeting other students and the TAs, which you're not going to run into them into the halls for at least another semester, unfortunately. And so if you go to tutoring, you can at least, you know, get, we have sometimes students work in groups. So it's really great also to just not have your first semester in college being sitting in, on your desk alone, but you know, it's through the computer, but it's like this, we get to meet each other, we get to talk to each other, but you need to be looking for it. That's an excellent point. And I think that probably concludes our session today. Um, the motto of Hunter College is the care of the future is yours, sustains Mihi Kurafatori. Um, and Professor Ligoria summed it up 
exactly to the point. All of these things are out there for you guys, um, but it is on our students to make that first step. Make sure you reach out, make sure you grab all these awesome opportunities. There will be hundreds of emails about internships, but unless you take that application and you fill it out and you submit, take the time to do this, um, the, the internship is not going to come to you. Nobody's going to pick you out of the crowd and say, hey, you didn't apply here, you got to do it. So again, the care of the future is yours. All these things are available. It's just a matter of making sure that you are reaching out for them. Um, going to say one more time, congratulations. Um, thank you so much, Professor Ligoria, Tyler, and Tana for being here with us today. Really appreciate the time that you dedicated to our fall 2021 Hawks. For the students in the room, don't forget, May 1st is the commitment deadline. Um, if you have yet to make a decision, we hope that Hunter is it. Um, definitely recommend checking out additional Hawk Talks. Computer science is one department, but there's also a bunch of other things. For those of you who are interested in perhaps double majoring, minoring, pre-med tracks, pre-law tracks, whatever it may be, there's other hot dogs that are happening. All you got to do is check out the website. Now, last but not least, if you have questions that are directly um, for the students, if you want to know what their freshman classes were like, how many notes they were taking, what the homework may have been like, whatever it may be. Um, we have a whole section of the website that's dedicated for our students and you can chat with them directly. It's called Chat with Students, there's a box. Um, if you go to our website, you'll be able to click on it and see everybody who's in computer science program or any other major or minor of your choice as well. So once again, congratulations. Thank you for being with us today. We can't wait to see you in the fall 2020 one semester, right, fall 2021. Um, whether it's in person or online, we're very excited to meet you. So thank you again and have a good one, everyone. Bye. Bye.